Hello and welcome to this tutorial series on how to create a first person game setup in Unreal Engine 5. What I've already done so far is build a blank Unreal project that's underneath a games template. I haven't created anything so my content folder is all clean and we're going to get started with this first video of how to create the game mode and inputs with the new input system that Unreal 5 has. So when working with Unreal, I like to dock my layout so I don't have to keep opening this up and closing it. So you can click dock and layout there. And then the content browser is down here on the bottom. What I'm going to do first is just create a new game mode. If I right click, I'm in the content folder. So if I right click and choose blueprint class, I'm going to go to all classes here and type the word game mode. And I'm going to click on the game mode. Click select. And I'm going to title this one GM FPS since we're going to do a first person uh, point of view game. Uh, we can just call it FP for first person or FPS for first person shooter if you want to add shooter components. We'll just call it GM underscore FP. One of the next things I want to do is make sure that my project settings are set properly. So if I go to edit project settings, if I go to maps and modes, I'm going to change the default game mode to my new GM underscore FP. I'm also going to go ahead and save my level as a new level. So if I go to File, Save Current Level As, and I'm going to title this one Main Level, and it's going to save it into that content folder. You can create a subfolder called Levels and put all your levels in that folder or do this at another time. There we go. So it'll create my main level. It'll also create an LOD zero base level for level of detail uh, zero. So back in the project settings, I'm going to go to the default maps and change the editor startup to main level and default uh, game map to that same main level. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is create inputs because we want to be able to, to control our character with WASD to move the character around and the mouse to allow the character to look around when I move the mouse. We're also going to start with a basic jump as well, so we use spacebar to use jump also. Okay, so if I right click in my main content folder, I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call this one inputs. Uh, and I'm going to open up that inputs folder and if I right click in there again, um, I'm going to go to the input section and we'll start with the input mapping context. So I'm going to title this one IMC underscore FP for first person. So this is going to be where we're going to house what each input does. WASD, move, right, move, look, and jump. And then I'm going to come in here and create individual input actions. So if I right click beside that and choose input, input action, I'm going to so, uh, title this IA for input action underscore look. So that'll house my camera look at with the mouse. I'm going to right click again and add two more input action IA move. I'm going to right click again. Uh, input action IA jump. And as we add more to this project, we can add more inputs as we need to. So if I double click to open up the IA jump, I'm going to leave this as value type set to bool. It's basically on off, true false. So when I tap the spacebar, that will be on. Or if I hold down spacebar, it's on. If I let go spacebar, that's off. So I'm not going to change anything with IA jump. But IA look and IA move, I'm going to change this value type to 2D axis vector 2. Okay, so for the IA look, 2D axis vector 2. This is going to be look, so if I move the mouse up and down or further away from me, closer to me, or left, right, um, that will allow it to save that vector uh, in the 2D axis. So make sure, you make sure we save that. So hit save. Then I'm going to open up IA move and do the same thing. Value type, axis 2D, vector 2D. And make sure we save that. So in our uh, input mapping context, I'm going to open that up. <coughs> And we're going to add the mappings here. So if I click the plus symbol beside mappings, open up my arrow, and then find IA look. And I'm going to do that two more times. The next one down, I'm going to add this to IA move and add one more IA jump. IA jump is going to be our simple one. That's going to be our space bar. So if I open up IA jump, click on the little keyboard right here, and I'm going to hit space bar. 
so that I'll add my spacebar button to IA uh, jump. Okay, the next one, the IA look, if I open that up, IA look, I'm going <clears> to <throat> change the, instead of hitting the, the keyboard, I'm going to click the none and I'm going to type mouse XY 2D axis. Mouse XY 2D axis. So get my uh, horizontal motion and forward backer motion of my mouse to the IA look input. IA move is the more complex one. So we need four inputs. The first one, I'm going to click the keyboard and hit W. And then I'm going to go and add a new action mapping underneath that. That may open it up a little more. And then the second one, I'm going to type in A. So W, A. And then I'm going to add another one. And we'll type with the keyboard S. And add the fourth one, which is D. D. So I have four, W, A, S, D. Those are the four keyboard inputs that we're going to use for the movement of the character. All right, so for the W action mapping, we're going to go to the modifier, and we're going to hit the plus symbol and add this to a swizzle, input access values. Okay. The... Um, The A, we're going to add a modifier and we're going to do negate. So I'm going to type in the word negate or click the drop down and find negate. The S keyboard mapping, we're going to add two modifiers to this one. So one and two. And the first one, we're going to use the swivel input access values. And the second one, we're going to use negate. And D, we're just going to leave as is. Okay, so then we're going to come up here and we're going to save the input mapping context and that'll wrap up this first video of being able to create a level, save the level in our content folder. We added a game mode which will drive all of our main actions and then we added our input mapping context and our three main inputs that we will uh, be able to move our character and rotate the camera around as well. In the next video we'll come back and we will start setting up our character blueprint and putting these action mappings to work. Uh, make sure you save everything, so if I go to File, Save All, uh, before we move on to the next step.